At the fourth rung up. There you go. Okay, now I think I'll do the same. A few days ago, I uploaded a restored version of the Apollo 11 moon landing footage, specifically Neil Armstrong's first steps onto the lunar surface with improved clarity and stabilization. It's an incredible piece of human history and I'm really glad so many of you enjoyed it. But as always, on the internet, some comments popped up insisting that the 1969 moon landing was filmed in the studio. And while some of these claims are honestly funny and surprising to me, I also think it's important to address them respectfully and with real signs. So today I'm going to take two of the comments from under that video, explain where the misunderstandings comes from and walk through the scientific and technical facts that show why the moon landing was absolutely real. I also touch on some of the most common moon landing hoax claims and explain calmly and clearly why they fall apart under scientific scrutiny. Let's get into it. The horizon on the right is far too low. Studio floor. Black wall. You have to know the moon is much smaller than Earth only about one-fourth of Earth's radius. That means the surface curves away much sooner, creating the impression of a very low horizon. On top of that, the Apollo 11 camera was mounted roughly one meter above the surface, much lower than human eye level on Earth. A low camera and a small celestial body is a horizon that seems surprisingly close. Why the sky is black? The moon has no atmosphere, which means no scattering of sunlight. No scattering means no blue sky, means pure black space and full daylight, exactly as it appears in every Apollo photograph. Why the lightning is consistent with the lunar surface? People often assume that the black background means a studio wall, but a real studio would create spill light, reflections, hotspots, none of which appear in the footage. On the moon, however, there is only one light source, the sun. Shadows are razor sharp because there is no atmosphere to diffuse anything. The lunar soil also reflects light back onto objects, known as albedo film, which explains why you can still see details on the shadowed side of the astronauts and spacecrafts. Trying to recreate this in a 1969 studio would have been nearly impossible. Comment 2. The second comment says, no atmosphere on moon. I let you to understand the rest. Well, no atmosphere isn't evidence against the moon landing. It's one of the most important clues that the footage is real. No atmosphere is exactly what we expect. No atmosphere explains completely black sky, harsh undiffused shadows, extreme temperature swings, no wind dust that falls instantly and cleanly. These are all natural consequences of a vacuum environment. Second, dust behavior proves the moon environment. In Apollo footage, dust behaves exactly like it should in lower gravity with no atmosphere. It forms perfect parabolas, it falls immediately, it never lingers or forms clouds. This behavior alone is incredibly difficult to fake on Earth, especially in 1969. Third, astronaut motion matches one-sixth Earth's gravity. Their gait, their jumps, the time they spend in the air, the movement of equipment, all of it matches lunar gravity.
To fake this, NASA would have needed wire ridging technology that didn't exist yet. Inside a vacuum chamber the size of a warehouse that also didn't exist. Additional frequent moon hoax claims. There are no stars in the sky. During lunar daytime the camera exposure is set for bright ground objects. Stars are simply too dim to show up. Second, the flag is waving. The flag actually only moves because the astronauts are handling it. Once they let go, it stops instantly because there's no air. Third, shadows point in different directions. Fake light. Shadows diverge on uneven ground. It's a normal perspective effect. Fourth, where's the giant blast crater? Because the moon lacks atmosphere, the engine exhaust doesn't behave like it does on Earth. No air means no explosive crater, just gentle dust displacement. If you're enjoying the content, feel free to support the channel by becoming a Patreon member or by subscribing. Your support keeps these videos coming. So thank you and now back to the video. Enjoy. Fifth, NASA must have faked everything. Here's what you need to fake. Low gravity, vacuum dust, dynamics, perfect harsh sunlight, black sky with no spill, globally tracked radio signals, by the way also by the Soviet Union and other nations, matching telemetry spacecraft behavior in lunar orbit, and so on and so on. That's a massive conspiracy. And importantly, that's before you even look at a single shadow in a single photograph. That would involve NASA engineers and scientists, contractors at companies like Boeing, North American Aviation, Grandman, IBM, etc. Technicians, machinists and assembly workers, mission control teams, tracking station personnel, astronauts and their training support team. And many, many countless subcontractors providing parts, material and systems. You have to know it was one of the largest coordinated engineering projects in human history ever. About 400,000 people across more than 20,000 companies, universities and government organizations all contributed to Apollo 11. The idea alone that hundreds of thousands of people across multiple countries kept a perfectly consistent secret for more than half a century uh, is simply unrealistic. In fact, it would have been far easier to just go to the moon, which they did. Hard scientific evidence we still have today. First, retro reflectors. Second, lunar samples. Third, independent tracking. Fourth, extensive telemetry and logs. So to wrap things up, critical thinking is incredibly important, but it has to be grounded in real testable evidence. The Apollo 11 moon landing is one of the most thoroughly documented independently verified scientifically consistent events in human history ever. If you are curious or skeptical, I genuinely uh, encourage you to explore the data yourself. Ask questions, dive into the science, that's how we grow. If you've got more comments or topics you'd like me to break down, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time clear skies.